It's been long enough that I'm ready to tell this story. Last year, I was dog-sitting for my aunt. The dog is small, sweet, and a little skittish. I had worked most of the week, so I was just living in the house for the time being. It's a nice house. Not big enough to feel empty if you're alone, but not small enough to feel cramped. The only rooms I used were the kitchen, bathroom, living room, and the guest bedroom. My last day of work this particular week was a double shift. I was excited because after this I had two days off. I planned on using them to introduce the dog to RuPaul's Drag Race. I usually try to keep good spirits for a double shift because regardless of the time and annoying customers, extra money is always needed. My old job was as a barista and cashier. Mornings are always busy and nights are slow. On weekends, people are more concerned with coffee and breakfast than anything else we may have to offer. I was having a nice time, actually, because this day was turning out to be not as hectic as the previous ones that week. One even involved a small fire. As the morning rush line was dwindling, the limited tables in the restaurant came into view, and I started people watching. As I slowly scanned the customers eating bagels and reading the paper, my eyes met a man at a laptop. He had long, dirty hair and a bit of stubble. He stared at me with a little too much intensity. I wondered if he found my people watching rude, so I decided to clean and restock instead. It didn't take long for a line to reform, so I returned to my register. Once again, after the line died down, I could see the few tables in the front. The man was still there and he was still staring at me. Every now and then he would look at his computer, and then back to me. It almost felt like he was looking right through me, or like he could see every part of me. It felt so uncomfortable that I went and cleaned in the back of the restaurant, out of his sight. After the next rush, I took my break and sat far away from the man. He was out of my sight, and I was out of his. When I came back from my break, the man was gone. My manager asked if I had interacted with him at all. I told her about him making eye contact with me, but that nothing else really happened. She told me that the man had been watching porn on his laptop, and she had asked him to leave. So that was weird enough. This man had been watching porn and staring at me. I really wish that this was where the story stopped. Hours pass, and the rest of the day was entirely normal, despite me and a few female co-workers feeling a slight edge. We were in the process of closing, which is actually a process I really enjoy. I'm one of those weirdos that likes to clean. We're well in and I'm almost done with my assigned jobs when my manager comes up to me again. She informs me that the man had found his way back in the restaurant at some point, and she found him hiding in a back corner. She chased him out by threatening to call the police. She knew that earlier in the day he seemed to be paying attention to me. She said I could finish up whenever I wanted or needed to, but afterwards she strongly advised me to get home as soon as possible. She also offered to walk me to my car. I took both offers and quickly got my things together and clocked out. My aunt's house was not far from work. It was a five minute drive at most, which was helpful because then I didn't feel crippling anxiety for much longer. I got in the house and, after triple checking that I had locked every door, got into my pajamas. But unsurprisingly, I was not ready to sleep yet. Now was the time to introduce the dog to RuPaul's Drag Race. I went into the living room. The living room consisted of a couch, two chairs, a TV, a window and the front door. Unfortunately, the porch light was broken and the window had no curtains. That had me a little stressed, but I was willing to take that over the only other TV in the house which was the one that exists in the scary basement. 
Facing the basement TV included having my back to a sliding glass door facing the very dark woods. No thanks. I was setting up the TV when the dog started growling. I really didn't think much of it. As I said, the dog is skittish so he growls and barks all the time. I wasn't looking at him. I was muttering shush shush and figuring out how to work the TV. The dog didn't stop and started to get louder. So I finally put down the remote and turned to face the dog. I froze. The dog was barking at the window and there was an outline of a man at the window. The exact same build as the one at the restaurant. I screamed and luckily that was enough for the man to run away from the window. I stood there frozen for a while. The dog had calmed down but I didn't feel safe. So I went into the kitchen, grabbed a big knife and did what any responsible adult would do. Called my mommy. She did not advise calling the police. My mom never does. And instead came and spent the night with me. I told my aunt. I spent the rest of my time dog sitting, clutching the knife any time I slept or took a shower. My aunt also gave me permission to have one friend stay with me every night. Nothing else ever happened. I never even saw the guy come into work again. A part of me wishes I knew who he was or where he went or what he even wanted with me. I'm glad he was a coward and that all it took to scare him off was my scream and an extra small dog. Unfortunately, I quite recently had a very scary, more like terrifying, encounter. For some background information, I live in a small apartment complex right outside my campus with some friends. I'm also a 20-year-old girl. So all my friends were always bashing on me for never meeting up with any boys or going out. I had gotten sick of it. I didn't want to be the little friend who stayed home and ate pizza while my friends were out on dates with boys, so I signed up for Plenty of Fish. Now, I'm not the type of person who would say yes to any random stranger. They had to be nice looking, they had to have plenty of photos of themselves, and we both had to have at least two common interests. So with these rules in my head, I psyched myself up to join the world of online dating. Within a few days, I already had two boys I was talking to. One said he was a doctor, kind of hard to believe because he was 20, and one said he worked as a construction guy, easier to believe. I didn't like that the doctor guy was lying to me. But one day, as I was getting crap from my roommates, the construction guy, who we can call Dan, messaged me on a messaging app we were using and asked if I wanted to go out for a bite to eat. I told my roommates where I was going and who I was with. You know, all the things someone should do so someone knows if you've been abducted. I even had a check-in time, so that's when my roommate texted me if things were good. I had to say some silly code word that meant things were good. If I responded with another code word, it meant, help, get me out of this. And if I didn't use code words, then she would call the police for help. So I quickly dolled myself up and got ready for my date. I put my hair up in a classy bun, leaving strips of it hanging down around my glasses. I put on a nice white blouse and some black pants and I was ready to go. I jumped in my car and headed out to the restaurant where Dan had chosen. It was just out of my town, but it was still only a 15 minute drive from my apartment. I arrived at the restaurant and saw him almost immediately. He was wearing nice clothes and looked just like his pictures. He was waiting just outside the restaurant doors for me. His eyes lit up when they saw me. He walked over to me and smiled. We chatted a little bit outside since it was summer and not cold, and then we walked inside. We ate dinner and talked about our life and things like how school was going. I got the text from my friend, but since everything was all good, I sent that code word back. Dan talked about how much he liked his job and things, and altogether, it was pretty nice. 
except for one thing. Dan was boring. He didn't do anything exciting or really talk enthusiastic about anything, and it was boring. It was an average date, and I honestly didn't care to go on any more. The next day, I woke up to the feeling of my phone vibrating nonstop. I looked at it and realized it was vibrating so much that it had fallen off my dresser. I almost laughed. Then I saw that all the messages were from Dan. At first, they were all saying how much fun he had had, and that he would really like to go out again. But then the messages took a turn. They got violent and angry that I wasn't responding. It was 7 in the freaking morning. I was sleeping. I noped out of that situation. I texted him back and said that I'd been sleeping, and that no, I was not going on any more dates with him. I was just about to block his profile on both sites when I got a final message, watch your back. At first I was really creeped out, but then I thought that since I had him blocked and all my accounts were deleted, he could do nothing. Wrong. Later that day, I saw a text from a random number telling me how pretty I looked in my blue PJs. I glanced outside just in time to see none other than Dan running down my road. How the hell did he get my number? I thought warily. I blocked that number and continued what I was doing. Later that night, I fell asleep pretty early and woke up to my phone text alert going crazy. It was from the number I had just blocked earlier that day. There were dozens of messages telling me how I was going to get it. I quickly showed all my roommates the messages. They all told me that I should go to the police, but since I was a stupid person, I didn't. I blocked the number again and went back to sleep, but once again, I woke up to my phone buzzing. I didn't wait. I jumped in my car and drove all the way down to the police station. Once there, they told me that they couldn't do much to help me, and just told me to block the number. I did. At least I had it on record. Nothing happened for a few days. The number stayed blocked on my phone for a while, but then the pictures started. They were pictures of my house, of me in my house, my car, my work. I went back to the police and finally I was able to get a restraining order against Dan. I never received any messages from Dan again after that. I now never ever use dating websites. So Dan, let's hope we never meet again. If anyone has any tips on staying safer, please let me know.